This is so remarkable. We just talked to Susan Lee about how uh, non-supervisory workers, particularly at places like these fast food restaurants, are seeing their wages grow faster than the whole. Non-supervisory, low-skilled, so-called low-skilled workers getting raises. This is what's happening. This country has never seen this kind of job opening before. 7.5 million job openings. This is remarkable. I want to bring in David Bonson on this news. He's the Bonson Group CIO. David, uh, you know, this, again, we've had five months in a row where wages have grown more than 3% year over year. Seven for non-supervisory workers. Uh, the heartland, the regular worker out there getting a raise, I, I think is remarkable. Well, it really is. And there's another metric, too, Charles. The wage growth has been fantastic. And gone are the days where people are saying that, oh, no, what do we do? Wages are growing. That means inflation. People are understanding that this is productive wage growth. But also that underemployment number is at lows we haven't seen since years before the financial crisis, meaning people that are, are working part time when they want full time. That number stayed so high that numbers come way down. Really positive across the board in the jobs. Yeah. Data. And that last jobs report uh, last Friday, we saw part time for economic reasons let go down 800,000 in a single month, to your point. Now, when you say people, David, do you mean the Federal Reserve? <laughs> right. The Fed is not going to ruin this. No, and, and I don't and I don't think that it's just that, I mean, the Fed operates off of a philosophy, Charles, that, you know, I don't agree with the so-called Phillips curve that believes that a healthy jobs market is inherently inflationary. And in fairness, that's the whole academia. That's a, a prevalent economic theory that so many have believed. I thought the whole decade of the 1970s proved it wrong, but there are still what we call Phillips curvers out there, and they're wrong. Well, you, you know, look, wage growth can be inflationary. You can have the price level going up for unhealthy reasons, but that's not what's happening here. Consumer price index and the different numbers that the Fed looks at are staying relatively stable and wages are growing, productivity is going higher. That's what a good economy does. I want to shift gears here a little bit, David, because I know you love energy. You say it's leading the way for this market overall. So state your case there. Yeah, I mean, you do have the oil price itself up, you know, 28, 29 percent on the year. But our case has never been dependent on the actual price of oil or the actual price of gas going higher. Uh, what you see this year is that the so-called energy infrastructure is really starting to catch a bid. The oil and gas pipelines are up about 15 percent. They're offering investors uh, over 7 percent yield, a yield that is now being paid entirely from free cash flow of these companies as they have oil and gas running through their pipelines. And all of this, Charles, is before we've even begun the exporting wave that I think is going to represent the next 10 years of American economic life. And, uh, of course, uh, I, I want to bring up you're the author of The Case for Dividend Growth. Uh, in a market like this, how does, that, how do you, how does the, our viewer implement that in their investment approach? Yeah, I think that you want to find those companies that are not so heavily indebted that their dividend is vulnerable. You know, when you have a ton of debt on your balance sheet, when things turn on you in the economy, which will happen. We saw what happened a few years ago when oil prices dropped 70 percent. And so all of a sudden you had projects that were drying up and, and, and margins that kind of compressed. Right. And it makes the dividend vulnerable. But you look at an ExxonMobil, you look at a Chevron, these companies that have kept not only their dividend, but the growth of their dividend. David, very, let me jump in here one second. We've got, some, we've got these some breaking really reliable news. reliable companies that right now are a very attractive valuation. David, hold on one second. We've got breaking news. I'm going to go to EMAC and then get your thoughts on the Michigan sentiment. Uh, U.S. consumer sentiment is exceeding forecasts, coming at a 97.8. Forecasts on income optimism popping higher. We should be mindful that since 19. 52, that average for U of University of Michigan sentiment is trending around 87. So for it to come near 98 shows that consumer confidence is rebounding after the shutdown spending is coming in. So that's another positive for uh, the market, even though the market's trending flat right now. David Bonson, you know, I put forth a theory that the U.S. media almost talked our country into a recession in December. And I, and I stated my case based on, on the news 
the headlines from major news organizations and periodicals and a sharp increase in savings. Uh, we went from 6.1 to 7.6 percent savings month over month, despite the fact that incomes went up 150 percent more than Wall Street anticipated. It feels like that angst, angst, however you pronounce it, from December is fading and people are becoming optimistic again. Your thoughts? Uh, they absolutely are. And the only thing I want to add, because I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but I'm going to add to it, is that it's the business confidence number that I feel is more important in terms of, in terms of sustainable economic growth. And so to see this consumer be so confident, we, uh, yes, the shutdown now ending, but also, let's face it, the stock market jumped double digits in the first month and a half of the new year. There's plenty of, and wage growth and all that, right. plenty of reason for the consumer to be happy. But Charles, we need to see business investment. We need to see a small business optimism and business confidence get back. It fell off a couple quarters, and I can't really blame the media for that. And I think that those numbers are coming back higher, and you're going to have a very strong 2019 in the U.S. economy. David, have a great weekend. Always great talking. Appreciate it.